In just a few years, a British-born Pakistani teenager living in Birmingham, England, went from a quiet kid who lived on the internet to becoming the leader of a hacktivist group, and then joining the terrorist group ISIS, and eventually fleeing to Syria with a British woman more than twice his age, where he became the Islamic State's most prolific English recruiter, conspiring with others around the world to plan and execute terror plots in the US and the UK, which led to a manhunt in Syria where he narrowly avoided death on several occasions by using his son as a human shield. But what caused the transformation of a seemingly normal kid into an Islamic extremist? Junaid Hussein was born in 1994 and was a second-generation British national whose family immigrated from the Pakistani side of Kashmir. Growing up in King's Heath, Birmingham, Junaid had a comfortable upbringing where his father ran a private cab service. His father, Junaid Hussein Sr., was considered an outgoing and honorable man by his peers, contrary to his son Junaid, who was described as a shy child who barely spoke. At 11 years old, Junaid's curiosity for hacking was sparked when his account for a game he was playing was hacked. It opened the door to his criminal career, but as his hacking skills developed, so did his political views. When he was 15, Junaid attended protests against the English Defense League, a group that opposes Islam in the influx of Muslims into the UK. Despite this, Junaid found himself spending more and more time on his computer as he went through his teenage years. He fell down a rabbit hole of conspiracies, which influenced him and shaped his political views dramatically. He started using hacking as a form of political activism to raise awareness of issues he thought Muslims faced. But Junaid was just one person. He needed more help to support his activism. Frustrated by a lack of active hacking groups in the forums he frequented, Junaid, still 15 at the time, took matters into his own hands and created his own website for hacking, Poison.org. He adopted the alias Trick and formed a hacktivist group that was called Team Poison. In December 2010, Team Poison began infiltrating Facebook groups that they deemed were Zionist, right-wing, or anti-Islamic. Within these groups, posts were made that stated, on the evening of December 31st, 2010, Team Poison will clean up Facebook. And on New Year's Eve, hundreds of Facebook pages had all their posts deleted. By February of that year, Junaid had hacked the EDL's website with a message stating, Hacked by Trick, aka Say What? And just six months later, he was targeting members of the British Parliament. In June 2011, Team Poison leaked Prime Minister Tony Blair's address book online. Junaid was able to gain unauthorized access to a personal email account belonging to one of Blair's advisors using a phishing email. He crafted a fake login form for a password reset, and that was sent to Blair's advisor. When he entered his credentials, they were sent directly to Junaid. And in 2012, Team Poison carried out their largest attack yet. They launched a denial-of-service attack against the UK's counterterrorism hotline. Each time the hotline picked up, they would hear a robotic voice repeating, Team Poison. Over 700 calls were made from Team Poison over a span of three days, which they accomplished by redirecting calls and recordings through a server in Malaysia. The next day, Junaid called the office to taunt the counterterrorism hotline. Sorry, How you doing, girl? Uh, fine, thank you. Hey, so I got some terrorist information for you, mate. Oh, okay, uh, so Yeah, uh, there's these guys that keep prank calling your office. You're being Play that again? Bombed. Yeah, you're being phone bombed right now, mate. He even bragged online about his immunity to law enforcement. But just days later, Junaid was arrested. During his trial, evidence had stacked up against Junaid. His only real option was to plead guilty for the email hack and for disrupting the counterterrorism phones. But as a 15-year-old first-time offender, Junaid was given a lenient sentence. In July 2012, he was sentenced to six months in prison, but he was eventually given early home release, having served just six weeks during his short stay in Feltham Institution. Junaid's experience shaped his political views in an even more extreme way. Before prison, he'd labeled himself an extremist and a cyber terrorist, but described his political views as anarchist, with little interest for political Islam. But this would change after spending his time incarcerated with another radical Islamist. After his release from prison, Junaid seemed to turn a new leaf. He enrolled in London Metropolitan University to study computer forensics, and his hacking came to a stop. Instead, he created a website called Insecure.com, a site that provided a platform for hackers to complete challenges and develop their skills legally. But he grew tired of this in his studies. He started making political posts online again, and attended more protests in Birmingham. In July 2013, Junaid protested an English Defense League rally, where he and other counter-protesters rushed police at the event. 
Junaid was arrested, but released on bail pending further investigation. His arrest reinforced his political views even further. And according to one of his friends, after his arrest, Junaid started posting on Facebook some extreme ideology kind of stuff. While Junaid was still on bail, just 19 at the time, he left the UK for Raqqa, Syria, the Islamic State's de facto capital at the time. It's unclear exactly how Junaid joined the Islamic State, but when he moved to Syria, so did his fiancée, Sally Jones. A 43-year-old British woman Junaid had met online and formed a relationship with while they were both living in the UK. And with her, she brought her son from a previous marriage, Jojo. Together, Junaid and Sally created new Facebook and Twitter accounts under new names. They tweeted often, quoting religious texts, encouraging people to migrate to the Islamic State territory, and calling for acts of terrorism in the US and UK. They reached thousands around the world through social media, successfully grooming many, and inspiring several terrorist attacks through online conversations. In April 2015, Junaid instructed an Ohio college student, Munir Abdelkader, to attack a police station near Cincinnati. But Munir was arrested before he could carry out the attack. In May, Junaid convinced three people in the US, Abdul Karim, Elton Simpson, Nadir Sufi, to kill the organizer of a Draw Mohammed contest in Texas. But the FBI had already been surveilling the three men and had undercover agents at the event. Once they arrived, Elton and Nadir open fired on a school security officer, but both were quickly put down by an off-duty officer and undercover agents. In June, Junaid convinced a 20-year-old from Kosovo, Ardit Farizi, to hack into a retail company's database, leaking the personal identifying information of over 1,000 US military and government personnel. The list was sent to Junaid, and he publicly released the information and made death threats online. Junaid had gained a notorious reputation, but unbeknownst to him, his actions online were being watched. He quickly had become a high-value target, with his name appearing as the number three spot on the Pentagon's target list of ISIS personnel. On August 15, 2015, an attempt on Junaid's life was made by a drone strike, but instead killed three civilians due to faulty intelligence. Junaid had been just one building away from the drone strike, and with an increasing amount of drones flying overhead in Syria, he became even more cautious, now knowing he was being targeted. But just 10 days later, Junaid, just 21 years old at the time, was killed in a fatal drone strike on his bodyguard's car. Junaid Hussein's death marked the first time a hacker was considered enough of a threat to be killed by a drone strike. And after his death, Sally continued to use Twitter to make threats and inspire new attacks. While there is speculation that Sally and her son Jojo were killed in a US airstrike outside of Raqqa in June 2017, their deaths have not been confirmed and their status is unknown.